Welcome back, it's Christine again with the Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw a Persian leopard. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intos Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So, let's get arting. Alright, here's the um, Persian leopard. Um, I'm going to have the light source coming from above and to the right. As always, it means above and in front of, instead of behind and next to. The reason I'm talking about that now um, is I'm probably just going to go ahead and do the full pin pressure instead of doing that sort of sketching step step um because there's multiple colors so that'll that'll break it down i'm starting with this kind of darker kind of grayish color which is here by the nose right so that's just going to be you know full pin pressure and we're going to bring that straight up and it's going to blend itself into what will be this um more orangey tanny kind of color. So on the edges, right, we'll aim for like the corner of the eye. And then around all the dots we've drawn in, all the, there's tons of them, being a Persian leopard. Um, you know, we'll just draw around them, right? So that full pin pressure, you know, will come all the way up. All of this is full pin pressure. Um, and that kind of comes all the way over with the light source coming from above and to the right, right? We can slowly work our way over here. And that comes like that. Right, so we aim for that corner of the eye, but with a different color, we'll have to continue that on. Blend all that in. There's not much on this like darker grayish kind of color. It's just kind of the nose and a little bit under the eyes. Maybe. I'm going to do a little bit under the eyes. But this whole side would definitively be highlight, so that's easy to do. Right, and you can see I'm just drawing around all the little circles. All the areas of dots. And we'll allow the, the black to stand out for that. Um, probably coming to about here. So this is one side. So if we pop off Right, you can see there's clear, like, distinctive dots, but we could be clearer if we needed to. Um, and it'll look better as we as we flush it out, too. Um, as we come over here, this would still be highlight. So this whole section with the this grayish color would all be highlight. You know, and we're starting to twist as it's coming off. Um, and then aiming for that, for the eye there, that corner, just filling that in. And then underneath the eye, we're going to have some, again, blending that in with the black that's already there. This isn't much that we're adding here. Just a little bit. And we'll do the same thing on the other side, right? And then, you know, there's several different colors all kind of ramming together at different points. Um, and then on this side, we're starting to get into shadow territory, right? So I'm actually going to do this with light pin pressure um, instead, but fully filling this in. All right, same thing though. Because with the light source coming from above and to the right, you have, you know, where um, the face would be turning away. Now, as a predator, um, there actually probably would still be some highlight under the eye, but we're going to do it in a 
shadow first and then figure that out. All right, so I'm gonna finish this gray, which is just up the nose, finishing this section, and I'll be right back. Now I'm gonna take um, it's kind of cream color. It's not full white, um, but just this little cream, and we're gonna do that because that's just under like the eye here, right? You have this burst of, of lighter, brighter um, fur under the eye. And then you kind of get a little bit here as well, where it's kind of trailing up next to the eye. Now under the eye, where it's running into the eye over here, this would be in shadow because it's rolling into the eye, you know, um, before it goes back into highlight. So then we'll have more highlight coming up this way. So just a little bit here. And then same thing on the other side, but like before, right, I'm backing off my, my pin pressure. And once again, I am probably gonna add some highlight here, but for now, we'll back off the pin pressure um, to fill that in. Um, again, down by the eye, that's gonna be in shadow, so making sure shading that. And then, you know, here we can go back into highlight. Um, and then our, you know, pin strokes are kind of swooping up and over. But as we come to the back side of the eye, right, we're sort of swooping back down, potentially going back into, into shadow, but I think it'll end before we get there. Um, now, we have um, down by the nose, too. I'm just debating on if it, I do it in white or in this cream color. So we're going to do it in the cream color. And then as we come off to the other side of the nose, right, we're coming around. The nose wouldn't really be doing enough to block the light, so this is still full pin pressure right over here. Oh, that's a good start, I think. Okay, so we're going to go to this more tan color. Um, and so most of the rest of the face is in this color, minus the chin and the bottom part of the mouth here, which I'm going to switch over to white. But for this, they're kind of, um, you can have with, with Persian leopards, because I, you know, whenever I'm doing it, I always research it. it. Looks like you can have sort of cream color the whole way, you know, very light colored um, leopards, or they can have, you know, this orangey look to them, tan, orangish look. So once again, I'm back to full pin pressure. This is fully highlight here. Um, you know, as, as we're coming up this way, uh, let's change that a little bit. Partly because I'm, I'm aiming my strokes in a certain way. Right, coming up this way, this would be our, our strokes would go this way, but as we start looping down this way, Right, we need to be mindful that there's a direction change in the uh, in the fur as we come off, and then start to fade off our pin pressure. There'll be some wiggle room as to where that's happening, but right, all of this backside, you know, we'll do it in this faded pin pressure and then we can go kind of from there. If I decide it's not really going to do that. Right, so then all of this backside, same thing, right? All of this is, is definitely shadow. There's some debate as to where I'm going to put the shadow elsewhere, but this is certainly shadow. It's 
been a while since I've done a cat with spots like this. Right, and there's typically, you know, you have enough hint of a the edge of the animal that even though some of the lines go, go some of the black uh, go off the edge, you don't have to fill it in because our minds will fill in the rest. Which is a pretty nifty trick. Now, um, all edges are in shadow, right? So even on the side of the light source, you're going to have some shadowing just at the edge. Not much until that full pin pressure kicks in. Um, so this, bringing it all the way down, this would all be And right, just going around the um, the spots, which is surprisingly effective. Sometimes it can look harsh, but it it's almost better because you draw attention to them, and it's such an important feature on a you know on an animal like this that it's not necessarily a bad thing, right? That we have it. And it's more distinctively noticeable where um, there's more pin pressure, but it should still be obvious where there's not. Right, so we have all of that. There's going to be some shadowing here, but otherwise, all of this other, like, brownish color minus what's on the face should be highlight and I've got to fill in the gap here so I'm going to finish this like tannish color um, and I will be right back We have, you know, down here now where the, um, you know, the, the, the mouth is connecting back in. Of course, the lighter color underneath, but on the edge here, you would still have some shadowing. Um, because there's going to be a gap typically, and it's only going to be shadowed in the areas where it's you know, you have um, an actual gap and not up where there wouldn't be a gap. And even though most of this will be in highlight, it's the same thing on this backside as well. Um, you're gonna have that shadow probably a little deeper than um, the shadow on the other side. Still going around those, um, uh, markings uh, and then they have kind of a big black section down here so we don't have to worry about that and then because the rest of this is kind of taken care of the rest of this would be highlight so we'll just once again do that full pin pressure going around all the little spots So the ears are really the only thing I'm worried about as far as needing to add color to the black because we can get away with it anywhere else. We'll see if the ears let us get away with it or not. It depends on how much. I'll make that judgment call after I add in the brighter color because it depends on how much I can do that's, that our brains are then filling in the rest, right? So this is a lighter color, this whole little like spot. Um, again, backside and shadow, but then we'll put full pin pressure to fill in the rest of this. Yeah, I don't know that that's going to be enough. I might have to do some dark gray. 
And then the interior would have some dark, some dark coloration happening. Okay, so a few things to note. There's definitely a, a big difference in how the face is coming down, right? It's coming all the way down to here. So I'm going to fix that. That's not a big fix. That's just a matter of changing just a little bit down at the bottom here, right? And maybe readjusting some of the edges. Right, just filling it out just that little bit. Nothing big. Just make sure that it looks nice and rounded. Right, there we go. And now it can come down just as far. That'll rebalance it out. Up top, some of it is the, the black on top, and some of it is it's, his head isn't <laughs> drawn exactly. the same across. Again, not a hard fix. Just filling out a little bit on the other side. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get the white in. Right, so down here, shadow. All the way kind of around because it's underneath. And on the interior here, it's going into a dip as well. And then, you know, we have kind of that little black spot at the end of it. But same thing on this side. You're going to have a shadow underneath. Um, and it all the hair, the, the fur will tip in. But, you know, it's going to go back out into highlight here pretty quickly. Right, so then... Filling that in once again around all of our little spots. And then the black would, would fill in the rest of that. Right, so, and you certainly can see, right, like that black's encompass, this certainly works. The only thing, again, I don't know about is the ears. Um, and then we have um, the chin. So I am going to do the chin in full shadow and then add in... Um, highlights from there just because it'll probably be a little easier to do although maybe not with all these spots it's the whole reason I didn't do it elsewhere um, their chins can be pretty furry mm, I don't know that that's the word I'm looking for they have they have some extra fluff coming off the bottom so we don't have to line up nicely. We can allow that fluff to just roll right out the bottom. Yeah, I feel like maybe I should have done this in all, in all highlight like I did the rest. It's just a little easier not having to go around the spots over and over again. Right, so still this is still backed off pin pressure because I did do it all in shadow instead. And then the highlights will really be where everything kind of kicks in. Wait. So then you're going to have, right, that full, well, I'm not really doing full pin pressure, but um, highlight all through here. Kind of in the upper middle of the chin, leaving um, a shadow for the mouth, but still like pulling it over. And then once you kind of cross that threshold up the middle, allowing this to taper off or start to taper off. So lessening how many lines I'm adding, allowing that to to go into shadow over here and then blend it in better than what I did. You don't want it to be obvious where a blending is happening so if you can see that it's probably a problem. 
Right, really making sure this is nice and bright though. All through here. Which is really where the heart of it is. I'm gonna be adding some um whiskers as well, so that'll make a difference. Yeah, it's good. Good so far. Okay. Now for um Ear fluff. Gonna maybe go with a slightly darker tan in the middle. Right, so we're gonna have all of this coming out of the ear. Again, I don't know if we're gonna have enough to really get away with not. Um, away with not sketching out the black but I'm give it a go right so just allowing some of that to fill in as it's coming out of the ear but not into the ear like that yeah I think I'm gonna have to add and just that bit. Okay, same thing over here. So they don't have, from what I could see, they don't have white fluff in their ears, which is interesting. Theirs is a darker color. So they have this darker fluff. Um, and the interior of the whole ear is really darker, so we'll do that as well. So I'm going to get this ear done and I'll be right back. I'm just going to add some highlighting for the fluff. Not much, just a few little stripes of where I think it would be picking up some of that light. And then we'll go to a darker gray to finish out this color. I'm going to try not to do it anywhere else if I can avoid it. But once I do it one place, sometimes it doesn't look right unless I do it elsewhere. Sometimes that's fine, but we'll have to see how it goes. Right, I'm adding in a little bit of highlighting on the top of that ear. And so that's, you know, it would be. And over here as well. That back side would really be highlight. Right, you're going to have that kind of lip here, but then that would be highlight. So adding just a little bit of that in. Now for the nose. We'll see how the rest of that kind of goes. Nose has two different colors. Um, has kind of that pinkish in the middle and then like a blackish on the edges. So once again, I might have to resort to um, drawing in the black, but we'll see how that goes. Because there's enough of the pink, we might be able to get away with not doing it. But it depends on you know, the nostrils, how much of this is noticeable versus how much I really need to be able to do. Right, so we'll bring that on over. Okay. Oh, well, maybe. Maybe. I'll get away with it. Okay. So. Where it's going under the nostrils, that would be in shadow. But then, 
you know, you're going to have highlight besides that. Um, it does kind of go to a dip in the nose. You know, I'm going to highlight at the top, obviously. You'll have highlight on the back side of that dip and shadow on the side closest to the light source because it's dipping in and then that back side's picking it back out. So you'll we'll start backing off our pin pressure as we come back to the other side. Plus, it, once again, you know, you're dipping into the nose. Yeah, I'd really like to be able to do that without the black thrown in. But alas. All right, so I'm gonna get the eyes in and then fix some of the cheek here, right? I never brightened it back out and it's very obvious. I'm still debating about what to do about the black. Um, so the eyes, I keep seeing that, um, you know, it's described as like a bluish green, but when I look at, at any pictures of Persian leopards, it looks more hazel to me. So I've chosen a grayish bluish green. Uh, and I'm probably going to add some yellow or light brown to give it a little bit of a hazel look. But for now we're going to start with the, the bluish green. Right, so I'm going to draw on the, the pupil. And we're going to do this on both sides. We want to make sure it looks like it's looking at us. So, you know, it's never a bad idea to push it more towards the center than you think you should until it looks like it's looking at you, right? So this one kind of looks like it's looking at me, but I don't think I got this one quite right. So we're going to shift it. Yeah, that still kind of looks like it's looking off to the right. So. Doesn't need much. A little bit of difference can go a long way. Yeah, see now it looks looks like it's looking at us. So then I'm gonna take it and lightly fill it in on both sides. So we're gonna do shadow first. Um, partly because you know we have some black around the eye, right? But as we come off the the pupil, you can see I didn't cover the top. We're gonna follow the edge of you know the top line here. That's where the black is, right? Because there's a, an extreme shadow ca being cast by the top of the eye. And so we're going to follow that down gently. And sometimes we have to make some adjustments where it's not quite the same, but you know, we're going to follow that down and fill that all the way in. And then all we're really doing is, is you know, circling around the pupil. We're just not filling in the top, so it's really a semicircle, but you know, he, he gets it. Um, and, you know, it's just this light pin pressure, not filling anything in yet. I just need to get this set up so that I can then fill it in. Right, so just slightly filling all that in. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to get this other eye done, uh, and I'll be right back. Before we move on, we're going to do some digital art timey-wimey stuff, which is more like digital art drawing stuff. Um, and we're going to take the elliptical maquis tool, you know, do a selection here. Erase out anything that's out the outside and then select inverse it, take the um, brush tool again, and fill in any edges next to the pupil. Just an easier way to do it. Um, you don't have to. I did many years where I didn't do this. I just found this to be easier. Then we're going to select inverse it again, reselect the ellipt elliptical maquis tool, and drag it over to the other side, where we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to kind of line it up. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to help. Um, I often will erase it out, 
select inverse and do the same thing over here just cleaning up the edges and I don't have to draw um, in the same way I did the others it's fine it creates kind of a crosshatch if I don't exactly do that and then we're just going to deselect everything right we have um, both pupils ready to go and they're the same size so that makes it a little easier okay so now um, right light source coming from above into the right so both eyes are going to get a burst of light against the pupil on the opposite side of the light source right so that's full pin pressure the opposite side of the light source and then on the side of the light source we're going to put that full pin pressure or at least more lines in um, to give the highlight the highlight's going to come all the way underneath the eye right so all the way under here but the edges are going to be in shadow so all these edges here are back in shadow we're going to have the highlight here and then tapering it off um, as we come to the edge and as we come to that inside of the pupil right that's still a little bit in shadow and we're going to taper off a little bit as we define this edge up here a little bit more um, not in full highlight just kind of you know it's entering into an extreme shadow so and then over here it'll be brighter but it is going to be you know in shadow technically if we were fully filling it in it would be brighter than what's happening up top but we're not fully filling it in so we don't have to worry about it right and then just make sure it's like blended nicely Sometimes with this style, you can have some weird lines happening. Or in this case, it looks like the, I didn't quite get this line coming down right. That's fine. Easy adjustment. Right? But you can see this is definitely brighter. Same thing over here, just less space, right? Side light source underneath and then tapering out at the edge. All right, so I'm gonna get um, this eye on the left side done, uh, and I'll be right back. Now I am gonna do some of that um, yellowish or light brown. We're gonna experiment here because from what I've seen, the edges of their eyes will have like a, what looks like a brown line. It's hard to see, but it seems to be there. So we're gonna do that same thing. And I've brightened this up so it'll show up. All right, not much, just sort of following along on that edge, making sure that it's not crazy, but noticeable all the same. Okay. Then we're going to do some swipes, right? All I'm doing is this like quick up and down motion, right? So, right, quick up and down. I'm, I'm basically just doing squiggles, keeping them within, you know, the, the pupil. Add a little bit of light here too. That brightens it up, adds a slightly different tone to it. The final thing with the eyes, although well not the final thing for this drawing, is adding a light flare. I'm going to take the elliptical maquis tool, make a little bit of a you know circle or oval. Make sure I'm still within the highlighted section of the eye, so not up in here in the dark and fill it with the foreground color, which we've already changed to kind of my off-white. Drag it over and do the same thing on this side, roughly in the same spot. Yeah, 
so we get that nice look at us. Okay, so now we need to brighten up his cheek. Uh, several steps for that. The first is going to be that kind of off-white creamy color here. All right, we're going to fill this in. And then as we bring it over, I am going to taper it off. Okay. Next, we're going to take the dark brown section. Well, I did that on that. That's fine. It's not ideal, but they're not running into each other. I'm going to do the same thing, right? Because this would be bleeding into that. So you would have that full pin pressure here. That then sort of fades out, but you don't want it to fade in a color change. So we're going to be tapering this out through the um, slightly orangish color too. Right, and you have that going. And then backing off my pin pressure. And then that final color. I'm gonna take this layer back off so I can see what I'm doing. Right, you can see how much that adds, brightening up that cheek. Um, adds a lot. Well, it's a predator too, so you can make the argument that his eyes would be more forward facing and therefore would be catching the light, right? So just brightening this up a little bit as we're tempering out that highlight, bringing it down basically. Now, um, the only thing I'm not certain about still is the, the adding in the black. But um, first, I'll do the whiskers, and we can, I can decide this in a second. Okay, whiskers, pretty easy. I'm just going to draw from the shoulder, and I'm just going to make a swoop. Swoop. You know, and as I come up, I bring it up. I come down, I bring it back down. We have a lot of whiskers, so not full pin pressure. I am sort of just lightly doing this. Don't want it straight out. I do want it in, a, in an arch. And you, you do kind of want them bunched up. And then whatever you do on one side, you know, you're going to want to do on the other. So, you know, we have some coming down and then out, I'm bringing it up. Again, light pin pressure. Bunching them up. That was a little excessive. It was an overzealous whisker. Okay, and that's doing some weird things too. Yeah. So really easy to do whiskers. And this cat in particular has them. <laughs> Okay. Now, I just kind of feel like it's needed, but maybe I could do a little bit more minimalism here. If I just add a little bit of a hint that it's there, and a little bit of a hint that it's there, would that be enough? Maybe, maybe. I'm gonna do one other thing. All right, this is where that edge is. Just adding where there would be highlight. I'm leaving the rest of that in black. Yeah, and then um, I think that does actually work a lot better. And then using a uh, black background to fill this in. Yeah. There we go. Persian leopard. All right. So that's how you draw a Persian leopard. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.